humbly welcome back to the channel fix it for recently we got something in the post um i saw in the in our like ebay community uh following other resellers and stuff on instagram um this one popped up a guy posted it philip montague what's his insta let's see yeah monty resells philip montague's uh instagram is part-time ebay reseller from kent so after that yeah so he posted a ps3 says it didn't work add the yellow light of death um had a link to the ebay or I looked on his ebay saw it was up there for auction and won this for let's have a look let's try and put it up where's my purchases i'll take a screenshot but there it is screenshot there it is playstation 3 40 console got on 17 pounds on bids for an eight pound um six pound eight five shipping so well, let's get this baby unboxed and see what exactly is wrong with it and see hopefully we can fix it right so hopefully this is all nicely wrapped and bubble wrapped shape of the parcel is like the um it's just been wrapped up in cardboard right in the pictures on ebay they look nice and uh nice and clean and shiny which it is a few scratches which you expect Doors working. Is the backwards compatible? Should be the CO3. Pretty sure it was. Yep, it's a Chech CO3. It's all looking good. You got your minor scratches like you usually would have, but that's all looking in uh, pretty good condition, really, for its age. So it's got air safe and sound. Right, let's plug this in and see what we get. All right, kettle lead on, switch it on. Right, we have our red light. I'm going to tip it up so you can see it. Just to... Whoa, sounds like the plugs are in there. Right, plugs in now. Right, so let's zoom down. You can see the red light. Let's start it up and see what happens. Green. And as he says, three beeps. I think it's a yellow light of death. I can't see whether that goes quickly yellow or not. Right, let's get it apart. Let's get our... Woo! So you can see the light scratching on there. Let's get it apart and get our um, our serial tester on it. Now there's hundreds of videos of taking these apart, so I won't bore you with mine. I've taken many apart. One thing I do, do do. Hey, he said do do. Just gonna heat this up with my hot air gun. Use a hairdryer. Just try and keep this label intact. Just get the corner started. And hopefully you can get your tweezers under there or something. There we go. Because we've heated it up, you don't get the uh, void sticker comes off. I'm not trying to hide the fact that we've taken the you know the warranty seal off, but it's just nice to put it back intact. Right, so I've just taken the backing off of one of my Royal Mail sticky labels. So any label, just the backing of it, I'm going to stick it on there. Because that way it shouldn't stick to it and I can easily peel that off once it's cooled down. It'll stop any dirt and grime getting on the, the glue as well. So keep that safe. Right, let's get this baby apart. Oh, 
and so I usually forget these two little screws on the disk drive holder. Not today. Once I get it past the two pins at the front, I try and just like push it, wiggle it from side to side just to try and separate the paste from under here. So the only thing that's holding this on now is the thermal paste. And there we go. We are out, but there, look at all that dust gathered around that thermal paste. That's like an insulating jacket, keeping that chip warm and overheating. So, yeah, you know, it could be a case when, I mean, I have seen worse than this on, on working consoles, but this isn't good. How's the, how's the thermal paste? It's definitely original. Yeah, pretty uh, crumbly and hard, knackered. All right, let's me have a, let me go and have a quick dust down and clean up. All right, so that's slightly better and cleaner. It goes, the fan always comes off of that. All right, so we want this side of the board down in this corner. We have got a COK, COK002 board. All right, so we've got our serial reader here. Let's connect it up. Soldering iron on. Oh, so I've just zoomed down. This is our our front panel connector, our button connector, uh, and this is our. Try and get the other prong out of the way so you can actually see what I'm pointing at. That's our TX connection. That is our RX connection, which we have plugged in on here. So our white one is our RX, and our green one is our TX. But we swap them over. Obviously that's transmitting from there, receiving on here. So the transmitter needs to go to the receiving dot. So you don't connect the TX to the TX and the RX to the RX. You swap them around. But firstly, sort the soldering iron out. Now just give it a quick clean, just going to give it a little bit of solder on the end of there. And we're just going to plop a tiny bit of solder onto these connection points. So a nice little dollop of um, leaded solder. Lower mounting point and all that. So what did I say? Green is our TX. So we put this on RX on the board. Just clean my solder off my tip. One goes there. And white is our RX, so it goes on our TX. See, let's just put some solder on this board here, if I can. That's better. Should have done that first. A little dollop of solder. Now ground is on. Right, now I'm just going to get this back into the case. And we'll connect it up to the laptop. Just going to put a bit of tape over there so I don't shorten anything. So I'm going to put the uh, top back on. Just so those wires don't shorten the board. You can just put a piece of paper down and plug all your stuff back in. So really we just need our power. We'll put our button back on so we can see the lights. We're not turning it 
on so I don't have to worry about you know the thermal paste and stuff being on. Plug plug our power in there. Um, I think that's enough now to connect this up to the laptop. Right, it's just plugged into the laptop. We're just gonna flick the power switch on at the back now. As you can see, hopefully our red light is on our front panel. Now all we're gonna do is get a laptop and I'm just gonna run the software on it. If you want to see this in more depth, I've done a video that I'll link in the description and um, I shall put up there somewhere, hopefully. But I shall show you what results this comes back with. All right, let's just see if we can authorize this. Didn't put my mic back on again, for God's sake. Right, off, successful. Let's get the error codes. Forgot to make that bigger. Darn it. Anyway, there we go. You can see the lights flashing green, red and green on there when it's like transmitting and receiving stuff. Hopefully this goes all the way through. If you don't get the off successful straight away, just like shut it all down or try a couple of times. Sometimes you get program error. It never works first time usually. So you just shut it all down, start it up again, and eventually you'll get off successful to get the error codes. And the same again, sometimes the error codes uh, don't always come. They, they'll get stuck. They'll get stuck on six, they can get stuck on 20, they can, well not 20, but 18, 17. Sometimes if you leave it, it will carry on going. Sometimes it will just freeze up. But if you're lucky, it all goes through in one go like this. Right, and that is successful. Let me just add the window to that. Right, we'll put that one over to here. So there we have all our error codes, and it's not a pretty sight. It is the 3034 and the 4001. 3034, 4001, all the way down. That is the um, RX chip needs reboarding. So this one isn't going to be repairable today because I don't have a rebooting machine. It might not get repaired ever. Right, so here we go with this page. 30334 is, um, or 3034 is a cell RX communication error. It is the hallmark of a BGA defect, such as crap soldable. So that was that one. What was the other one? 44, 4401. So 4401 doesn't really tell you much either on here. But just that uh, it's 4401, it's just that it's the cell or RX again. Right, unfortunately, that is probably it for this one. Um, it's got problems talking the RSX and the cell CPU chip. They can't talk to each other. Uh, which is most likely the solder balls underneath. Um, I might send the coder a message, another YouTuber. He repairs like PS4s, PS5s, switches, everything. He's a very good uh, good YouTuber, good channel. And I know he has reballing machines, so I might send him a message, see if I can send the motherboard over to him and just ask him to reflow the, uh, the chips maybe. I wonder if he'll do that, how much he charges. Obviously, if it charges loads of money, then it's not worth doing, especially if it's not going to fix it. I think a reball um, is the ultimate way to go with fixing the um, fixing those errors that you get with the RSX and the the cell. So I just need to unsolder my wires off here and uh, call it a day hope you enjoyed this video please like please comment please subscribe thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you in the next one